have joined us in person on Facebook and on Zoom, Facebook Live and on Zoom. For those of you who are here in person, please take a moment to silence your cell phone or any electronics. Thank you. We begin our evening, Wednesday evening service with a pre-service meditation. So I invite you to get still, get comfortable in your chair, perhaps put your feet down on the ground and sit up straight and close your eyes if you're comfortable. As we play God's the Love That I Am chant, you may choose to chant along with it or simply follow along silently, repeating this mantra to yourself. If your mind wanders, which it will, simply bring it back to your mantra, God's the love that I am, or bring it back to your breath, God's the love that I am, and I will bring you out of the meditation in 10 minutes. Enjoy.
God is the love that I am. And so our meditation comes to a close. Gently bring your awareness back to your surroundings, into your bodies, and as you feel ready, open your eyes if you wish. Welcome to those of you who have joined us while our meditation was in progress. We're so glad to have you here virtually or in person. Let's begin with our opening chant, God is in this place. God is in this place. God is in this place. God is in this holy place. God is in this place. together in prayer. As we come together, recognizing the one presence, the one power, the one principle that is everywhere present, all-knowing and all-powerful, this one present whom I call God is the good of which there is no opposite, no equal, and there is nothing comparable. God is love. And I shout from the rooftops that I am an emanation of the divine. I am love. And I know this for myself, and I know this for each and every being everywhere. We are all love. Please join me tonight in showing love to all. Please, let's spread it around. And I speak my word this evening, knowing that it is blessed and it is divinely guided. I absolutely know that Reverend Sidney speaks the word of God, speaks the word of truth with love and light, and I am so grateful for this. And we are so grateful for our talented musicians, Sam and Tina. They are a blessing to us. Adam, our sound and lights, is a blessing to our church. And I am so grateful to know that our beloved volunteers and our staff are divinely guided as they do service to this church, of which it is a blessing to watch, just a blessing to behold. And I am so grateful to be here tonight, knowing that God is in this place. I'm so grateful, and with a grateful heart, just knowing that God is present everywhere, I release my word into the love of, and to the law of mind, knowing that God says yes to all. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily strength and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Hello, everyone. So good to be here tonight. And it's also good to know that I will be seeing my family for the first time in four years. COVID and all kinds of things have gone on in my life. And I'd imagine for all of you out there watching that things have changed a lot. So let's just reflect on this wonderful time, whether you're able to see your families or friends or not, it's in your heart. home. Ohio, wow. Hmm. I must really, really, really love you guys because I'm wearing Spanx tonight. Seriously, what sick and manipulative person invented these things? Well, she's on my list. My dog ran howling from the room, and even my cat gave me the side eye as I'm like, oh, I haven't done this in three years. So here we are in the season of light and apparently the season of vanity for Sydney. I have decided, though, that it's actually the season that for every action, there is an equal and opposite desire to lie down on the couch. So we're on the journey to Bethlehem. Did you know that? 
we're on a journey. You know, we've talked often about the fact that the Bible is really an allegory. It's a collection of archetypal images and ideas about you and me, our failures, our victories, and our learning in the growth that we experience in both the failures and the victories. So Mary and Joseph are you and they're me. They are the divine feminine and the divine masculine within each of us. Their story is our story. Their journey is our journey. I know, right? Like you didn't even bring a passport, you didn't pack a bag, but I guarantee we all have enough baggage to last the whole trip. I, prom I know I do. So my intention is that we all leave here tonight with a sense of personal meaning, that we can find personal meaning, identification in the Christmas story. So first I have to give you a little metaphysical Bible 101. Are we ready? Okay. The element that holds any story together and governs the selection of other elements in the, in the story is the theme, the central idea that the story illustrates. This is stuff that we probably learned in high school about how to write a story, how to interpret a story. And I have to tell you that some of my material tonight came from a wonderful woman, an author, whose name is Hypatia Haysbrook. And it's called The Trip to Bethlehem. And I just like saying Hypatia. There's something about that Hypatia that is really awesome. Anyway, our first indication of this theme is the actual framework of the Christmas story, which is a journey. A journey is an important mythic symbol for the process of transformation. So the trip to Bethlehem is a round trip during which Mary and Joseph undergo a profound change. They leave Nazareth as a couple, and because the child is born while they're away, they return as a family. A newborn child is almost always the center of attention and the factor that transforms a couple into a family. So the total journey in the Christmas story is archetypal, for it, it illustrates the inner rebirth process, the inner rebirth process through which the higher self emerges as the center of consciousness and becomes the integrating force within it and transforms the individual. There will be a test later. Did y'all get that? <laughs> You'll hear a lot more about this because what we are looking at for our Christmas Eve service is a metaphysical interpretation so that you can take that in, not as a literal story of once upon a time these two left a city and went somewhere else and had the kid, and oh, by the way, people call him a savior. That's not what we're talking about at all. And that's not what this is about at all. So Bethlehem literally means, the, the translation for Bethlehem literally means house of bread or food, house of sustenance, house of living. Metaphysically, the city of Bethlehem represents a consciousness of omnipresent substance. Isn't that cool? It represents divine energy which provides everything, everything needed to create and sustain everything, including the emerging Christ. Okay, and that's a lot to take in, so take a breath. I will anyway. So this house of bread symbolizes the abiding place of substance. When we acknowledge our divine source, when we admit our divine source, we are nourished and we are sustained. Bethlehem is the substance center within each of us. So geographically, Bethlehem is located in Judea, Judea, and Judea means spiritual recognition. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea. Judea, Judea. Judea, thank you. So let's cut to the chase. In our substance center, our inner Bethlehem, a union of love and wisdom takes place and our Christ nature is brought forth in substance. I know this is all like a lot of just mumbo jumbo, but let me put it a little bit more simply. Mary and Joseph journeyed to Bethlehem. Upon arrival, they gave birth to the baby called Jesus. You and I journey within and upon arrival, we give birth to ourselves our blessed, awesome, God-intended, magnificent selves. So why a manger? Why a manger? Why not a Holiday Inn or the Biltmore downtown? 
The Holiday Inn of Biltmore don't allow animals. They don't allow farm animals. The manger represents the animal life of which the new life is first manifest. A manger is a container for food for domestic animals. I promise I'm going to be connecting all of these dots. A manger symbolizes provision, provision for the human being in which the Christ consciousness becomes manifest or is born. So God needs us to bring our physical selves to the spiritual world. God needs us to bring our spiritual selves to the physical world. We give form to the divine ideas of God. God needs us to give form to the ideas. God does not show up as, you know, the Monty Python foot coming down from the heavens and you know, squashing everybody. That's not how that works. We give form to the ideas of God by saying yes, and then as we listen, we are guided to greater creation, to greater inspiration, greater innovation, greater, just greater versions of ourselves. We are constantly giving birth to ourselves. Our ideas don't immediately demonstrate in perfect appearances, conditions or, conditions or you know, room service, holiday inn style. Our divine gifts and inspirations occur within us mostly as sparks of imagination. Sparks of imagination, a hunch, a little intuition. And it's up to us to recognize that that spark, that spark of something, wants attention. It wants attention. It might show up as a brief little spark. And if we don't pay attention, it'll be a bigger spark. Sometimes it'll tap us on the shoulder. Sometimes it'll hit us upside the head if it needs to get our attention in a bigger way because we're just simply not listening. But that spark is what we must fan into a flame of possibility by attending it. We must attend. And we attend with our listening and our willingness to give birth to something new, a new version, a new transcendent version of ourselves. In our journey to that expression and bringing forth of the new idea and gift, our most important responsibility is to begin to clean out all of the stuff that will not support and nourish the gift that we are bringing forth, right? As the actual mangers, you and I must create the spiritual, emotional, mental, and physical space for the birth of a dream. We have to clean out that manger. We have to clean out the manger. So I want you to imagine a manger. If you've ever been to a barn, you know there's a big trough where animals eat. And around the trough, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of digestive residue. In our world, we might call it BS or belief systems. We must clean all of that out of our manger, right? So what is the other stuff that needs to go? Well, see, the belief systems can sabotage the new birth. If we've got old ideas about not being worthy or that we don't have the skills or the talent or, or we're not young enough or whatever it is, then that's BS. That's a belief system. And that's going to get in the way of that full, robust, vital, and vibrant expression of whatever it is the divine needs you to express. You have your divine assignment. You've been given your marching orders. But if there's something in your belief and your thinking or your self-image, your worthiness, or you are fully invested in the idea of being separate from God, or even a little bit invested in the idea, then that can cause that dream to show up in a, in a tamped-down way. It can be very tamped-down, not very rewarding. So... What stuff needs to go from your manger? Hey, what about people? You know, there, if there are toxic relationships that you have and you know that you've outgrown them, it's time to get rid of them. You can't keep getting mad at people for sucking the life out of you if you keep giving them the straw. <laughs> so stop getting angry at them Bless them, love them, ask for guidance, 
and move into a higher way of being. Now, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to leave your life or you're going to leave theirs, but it does mean you're no longer assigning them the blame for your anger, your sadness, your failure, your, oh, here's a good one that has to be cleaned out from almost everybody's manger, your defensiveness. Your ego will seek to protect you. It will tell you, no, it's their fault. Because inside, we're feeling, oh no, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. There's the belief, but it shows up as that, don't you dare, don't you dare. Don't correct me, don't touch me, don't say anything. Defensiveness will, it'll sabotage a dream faster than anything else, I think. Because it's a place where we have kept love out of our hearts, we've kept people out of our hearts. So it's worth looking at. In fact, I came up with a revised serenity prayer the other day. Um, Grant me the serenity to accept the people I cannot change, the courage to change direction when I see them coming, and the wisdom to not smack some sense into them when I can't avoid them. Amen. (laughs) So Pablo Picasso was quoted as saying, every act of creation begins with an act of destruction. Yeah, right. Um, it's, not, it's not as apocryphal as you think it is. It's just the way of life. You know, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, actually, we talked about the wisdom pattern from Richard Rohr, where we start off with order, and then there appears disorder, and then there emerges a new order. And what happens is that that new order has actually been signaling the, 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 the old form of order that that things are going to change, and that's when that chaos happens, because it's trying to push its way through. It's trying, to, it's trying to emerge in a clean manger. So stuff has to go. Beliefs, paradigms, and systems are all subject to destruction in service to creation. You know, we see this personally, and we absolutely see it in the world around us. We absolutely see this right now. You know, the friction that we are witness to this clash of ideas, politics, morality, I believe that all of these are in chaos because they're being dissolved in order to make room for the evolution of new and higher ideas, beliefs, and paradigms and systems. You know, they have to go. Man did not do well if dinosaurs would have lived. (laughs) Right? (laughs) And so old systems have to go. New ideas have to have room to blossom, to be nourished, and to to take root. So new life, new creation, new expression, all of these require a sacrifice. And the sacrifice that we are called to make is the releasing of the old in order to make room for the new. The word sacrifice, by the way, means to make sacred to make sacred. It doesn't mean to suffer, to go without the stuff you love or deny yourself, deny yourself the stuff that matters or what you or to deny that you matter. It's not any of that. It does mean to let go of the need for suffering or martyrdom. You have to sacrifice that. It does mean to go without the stuff that distracts you from knowing your own divinity and wholeness. And it does mean denying yourself the things that are habitually taking up your time, your energy, and your spiritual bandwidth, right? If you're going to reveal and give birth to your own Messiah, which each of us is our own Messiah, you darn well better get rid of and sacrifice the false messiahs. Like someone else's approval, false messiah. Hiding your own light behind a bushel of fear Inertia or procrastination, false messiah. And here's the rule. If you don't sacrifice for what you want, then what you want becomes the sacrifice. One life, just one. So why aren't we all running like we're on fire toward our wildest dreams? We've got this one life, right? Are we afraid? Have we failed before and we think it might happen again? You know, giving up on a dream because of a failure or disappointment is like slashing your other three tires because you got one flat. Right? It's like slashing, this happened, tires flat, that's it, the car's done. Neville Goddard wrote, you are already that which you want to be and your refusal to believe it is the only reason you do not see it. 
Yeah. You'll believe it when you see it. You'll see it when you believe it. Think about that. So what are you being asked to see? What is gestating within you? What is developing that is here to transform you and to change you? What is it? You know, the Gospel of Thomas from the Gnostic Gospels offers this. If you bring forth that which is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. A dream denied, a dream denied will destroy you. A dream delayed is not a dream denied, but it still must be attended to. It must be allowed. It must be acknowledged. It must be fed. It must be nourished. The manger needs to be clean. You need a clean place for a baby to be born. We are each giving birth to these precious, precious, beautiful ideas that are in their infancy. And when they come forth, we must love them into, into strength, into possibility, into robust celebration. I really believe that we must bring forth what is within, and we must honor it, and we must support it. So I want to suggest that we all get into the habit of asking ourselves, does this fill in the blank support the life I'm trying to create? Maybe it's a relationship. Does this relationship support the life I'm trying to create? Does this way of responding to people support the life I'm trying to create? Does this fear, guilt, blame, shame, regret, anger support the life I'm trying to create? Think about it. What do I need to become or do in order to reveal and to live this divine life I've been given? What do we need to do in order to reveal and to live in that, that place? You know, Lao Tzu taught that at the center of your being, at the center of your being, you have the answer. You know who you are and you know what you want. And I really, really know that this is true. When we put away all of the distractions, when we sacrifice the distractions and make sacred ourselves, our connection with spirit as spirit, when we make sacred our very lives, then we know who we are, we know what to do, we know what we want. You know, I found something that Michael Beckwith said a few weeks ago in a service, and I really liked this. He said, we are seeking to be an activated exclamation point. Think about that, an activated exclamation point for the power, presence, love, beauty, intelligence, harmony, wholeness, joy, and a life of pure spirit that's seeking to know itself as each and every one of us. Now, if the only thing you remember from tonight is activated exclamation point, I think that's a win. That's a big victory. That's a good way to go out into the world. So another, I thought about what he, what he said, and I rewrote it a little bit because I, I like to look at things and I, I want to interpret them in my language so I'm not just parroting what somebody else has said. I need to own them. I need to grok them right in here. So the life of pure spirit is actively seeking to know itself as power, presence, love, beauty, intelligence, harmony, wholeness, joy, and life. With every authentic and feeling-filled yes, we activate those qualities and we create within ourselves a beautiful and holy manger for the divine to be born through us. You know, we talk so much here about changing our thinking, and we also go beyond that to transforming limited beliefs so that we can rise up. We really, it's not just about status quo, identifying some thinking or beliefs and saying, okay, well, I get it. It's about rising up above them to vibrate at a frequency that is absolutely not even close to, to connecting to that vibration. You know, it's like going from, from AM to FM. The vibrations, one does not receive the other. One does not receive the other. And we want to be vibrating at such a high frequency of God and such a high frequency of knowing, of love, and of peace and wholeness 
that all this other stuff that's going around in the chaos of the transformation, the chaos of the, the dissolving of the paradigms, the destruction of the old systems, that all of that other stuff does not pull us out. That it doesn't bring us out of the game, that it doesn't tip us over, that it doesn't wreck us, that it just is happening and we are present. We are present to God. We are present to each other because we don't want to be pulled out, right? We don't need that. We don't want to be taken out. When we vibrate high enough, we won't be taken out. We all want to be more than our issues. I do. Geez, I really want to be more than my issues. I want to be so much more than these spanks, please. I want to be more than my histories, don't you? We all also want to be more than our stories. Now, so many of us identify ourselves with our stories and, and what we've gone through. If you only knew what I've been through. No, I'll pass, thanks. I'm, I'm good. I really don't want to know. We want to be happy. We want to know we are okay. We want to know that we matter. We want to know that we matter more than what our stories are. Whatever those fictions that we've made up about what happened, we need to know. We need to remind ourselves that we are so much greater than that. So we all know that Ernest Holmes founded this teaching, or if you don't know, now you do. Raymond Charles Barker was kind of the heir apparent or one of the heir apparents of, of Ernest Holmes. And I was looking at one of his books, and he wrote this. It's a little long, but I think you'll like it. So just relax and take this in while I pull the hair out of my mouth. There we go. The nature of humankind is spiritual potential. Left alone, people will not go to their doom, but will progress, progress, evolve rapidly, and bring forth a better world than ever before known. People are essentially good. The evil characteristics of the human mind and emotions are merely the leftovers from our trail of evolution. They are bad habits we have not yet handled rightly as we have grown tall in the ways of the mind and the spirit. Along the road of evolution, you have gradually learned the ways of life and have accumulated wisdom within you right now. Right now is the accumulated wisdom of the ages. It awaits your recognition, and upon your recognition, it reveals the full area of its knowledge. You and I are God. We're not imitations of God. We are God. We are God. This journey that we are on, that you and I are on, is a journey of remembering at the deepest parts of our being who and what we are, maybe for the first time. And when we know, and we know that we know, our entrance into Bethlehem is the homecoming we have been longing for. It's the homecoming, that place of peace, that house of bread, sustenance, that we have been seeking. It is the place of love. So I just want to finish with this. Teilhard de Chardin wrote, The day will come when, after harnessing space, the winds, the tides, and gravitation, we shall harness for God the energies of love. And on that day, on that day, for the second time in the history of the world, we shall have discovered fire. Let's pray. We connect deeply with the truth, the undeniable truth, that power that is all power, that presence that is the only presence, the love that is infinite love, the wisdom that has created and sustains this universe, keeps the planets in their orbits, for God's sake, keeps the rivers flowing, the tides rising and falling, keeps the bird on the wing, every blade of grass different from every other blade of grass, every seed, every grain of sand different from every other one. This is God. It is all there is. It is all we are. 
And we are that expression of it, that full, full-throated expression of God. I am the full-throated expression of God. I know that everyone here is that full-throated, full-throated, fully empowered, fully ready, fully licensed expression of God, fully anointed, fully accepted, fully intended, fully blessed, fully loved, fully necessary to the expression of the divine. And knowing that we are not just part of God, but part of each other, and that we share this sacred divinity, we share this infinite pool of wisdom, we share this this spirit, this ineffable spirit that surrounds and fills each and every one of us, knowing that we share that, I speak my word now with clarity, with joy, with love, and absolute trust and faith that right here, right now, in every area of life, the wholeness, the joy, the magnificence, oh, the beauty, the genius of God is being revealed. So should the need appear to be one of a physical condition, I know, I know, and I know that I know that I know that I know that wholeness is the nature. Wholeness is the only thing that can express right here and right now. I know for each of us that our bodies are celebrating God as, as we are the temple for that. From the bottom of our feet to the top of our heads, every fiber, every cell, every tissue, every bone, everything that operates within this physical body is governed by spiritual law, is governed by spiritual wholeness, is, is absolutely embraced in that truth of harmony, of wholeness, of right action, of love. And if an issue is pulling at someone's attention tonight that appears to be about finance, I know that, oh, I declare and I know that God is all abundance. God is the source of all life. House of bread, body of bread, universe of bread. We are that sub substance and sustenance of God made manifest and everything we need is already here, right here and right now. So we rise up in our consciousness to know it. God doesn't need to do anything. We rise up in our knowing. We dare to believe, we dare to receive, we dare to be receptive to a higher truth about who we are. And if there is a need for relationship, for love, for compassion, for connection, I know that the very foundation of God is love. And it will not, cannot be denied. It will express and it does express, and it is expressing right now, embracing and surrounding everybody on this planet with love, connecting hearts, connecting minds, connecting souls, so that there is a level of peace unknown yesterday and still growing tomorrow that we keep unfolding, we keep expanding, and we keep allowing our own evolving appreciation and knowing acceptance of love that is already so infinite. And we dive in and we bathe in it and we know that all of us, we are wrapped in it. We shine with it. It can be no other way. It cannot be denied, including by us because it's love and it is greater than all. It is greater than everything and it is the truth of everything. So I invite you to say with me right now that I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. Let's say it again. I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. Mm. And in that acceptance, I have great, oh, I have gratefulness, I have gratitude. Because I know it's done. I feel grateful. I just allow this sense of gratitude for knowing that all I have done is let God be God. And that in this prayer, I am not praying to get. I am praying to let. I have not been praying to God. I am praying from God. That Bethlehem within me. And it is good. I release this word. Letting it be so. <laughs> this treatment is the demonstration. All we've done is recognize the truth of what is. And so it is. 
together we say, amen. I want you to say something right now. I am an equal partner with God. I am an equal partnership with God. All right. So, as equal partners, we have a responsibility to receive, to give, to receive, to give, to receive, to give, and to know that God's not just giving to us, but God's Spirit is working in giving through us. But if we aren't taking our part, if we're not doing our job and giving from that space of Bethlehem, from that sustenance, from that source, then there's no way that God can do its job and continue that, that process of equal partnership. So I want you to take your offering, and if it is something that you do automatically or you're going to drop in the box on your way out, I want you to take the idea of that offering, this give, this generous give, the generous give, ah, place it in your hand and hold it to your heart and say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Yeah, baby. Amen. All right, it's you. Come on. Blessed always, blessed always, for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so Gail's going to give you a few brief announcements, and then we'll go home to Bethlehem.
Yes. Or Ohio. <laughs> I'm standing a little taller knowing that I'm representing God. Thank you. Wonderful. Oh, take off my mask. <sighs> now God can see me. Okay. So these are Wednesday night's announcements. The ways you could make donations. Call the office at 818-762-7566. Go to nhcrs.org slash give. Text the word give to 818-457-3419. Thank you. Prayer with a Practitioner is available in person or on Zoom. So if you're on Facebook, go on Zoom and you can get prayer with a practitioner. And if you're here, you can have prayer with a practitioner if you just stand up here and ask for it. Um, there will be practitioners up here waiting for your request. There will be no Wednesday service, evening service on December 22nd and December 29th. No service, so do not show up here. <laughs> Join practitioner Joanne O'Brien on Wednesday, January 5th, 2022, Oh my gosh. Ooh. For a wonderful Tazday service with potluck on the patio following. Woohoo! I know she'll have pie. <laughs> Meditation starts at 6.50 and the service is at 7 p.m. And that's on the first Wednesday of January 2022. The youth church is now open on Sundays for the 945 service. We welcome youths of all ages. So please bring your children. They can go to the youth church, and we could, you can come in here, and they're taken care of. It's a great thing. 2022 Journey of the Heart pledge forms are available in the foyer or online. Living a Course of Miracles is on Zoom. This group, facilitated by practitioner Jeannie Laporte, will meet tomorrow night, Thursday, December 16, from 7.15 to 9.15 p.m. and all are welcome. You could just pick up a, you know, where, she, where you left off last time, it's just totally fine. Feeding the homeless. Our love and kindness ministry is feeding the homeless this coming Sunday. I think it's December 19th. To support this ministry, go to our website, which I'll give you the number, the name again for the website. Volunteers and donations are always welcome. Blanket drive for the homeless. We are collecting new and clean used blankets again this year. If you get a new blanket, give us your old one and wash it, please, before you give it to us <laughs> for the homeless. Please drop blankets off in the red bins outside the sanctuary on December 19th and December 26th and January 2nd. The, distri the distribution will be on Sunday, January 2nd. Contact Gilda Gomez at 818-383-0453 if you need more information. Thank you. All new Christmas Eve candlelight service is Friday, December 24th at 7 p.m. Join us in person on Zoom or on Facebook Live for an all-new Christmas Eve service that will include beautiful readings, singing, and candle lighting. Child care will be available in the youth church. We look forward to celebrating with you. New Year's Eve burning bowl service and potluck, Friday, December 31st from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Prepare for 2022 by standing in the strength and power of your dreams. Join Reverend Sidney for a guided and sacred ritual of prayer, meditation, and journaling to release 2021. Child care will be available in the youth church. After the service, we'll enjoy fellowship and a delicious potluck on the patio. So please bring your favorite dish to share. There will be pie. There will be pie. Did you hear? There will be pie. Um, we want to thank everybody who participated in the Giving Tree event. It was a huge success. Bless you all for helping. Thank you so much. We had, we served, how many children? We served 88 low-income children. Wow. 68 parents. 
there was not a glitch. We had wonderful volunteers. It was just an amazing experience. And please join us next year. We'll have more volunteers, and we'll probably have a big party because the COVID will be gone by that time. So we'll, yeah. praise God. Thank you so much. OK, so virtual, a Zoom virtual patio before and after the service on Sunday and Wednesday, we have virtual Zoom patio. So if you would like to join with other fellows that are on Zoom, just ask and you will go into a breakout room, which is a patio. So you're welcome to do that if you're on Zoom. Zoom meditation. Every morning, Monday through Saturday at 8 a.m., there is a Zoom meditation. I think it's for 15 minutes, and I hear it's wonderful. Yes. Now, visit our website. I'll get a pen and paper. This is our website, nhcrs.org. And you can obtain Zoom links and more information about all the events and to sign up for weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. So you want to keep involved because we're back. We're back. Our church is back. And we're a church. We're a church. We're a church. <laughs> and we hear the word. We, we, we want to be here. So please come back if you can. If you can't, we're on Zoom. Everybody's welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have to tell you, Dr. Mark and I had a Zoom meeting today with Gilda about the, the um, Helping Hands ministry. Am I saying it right? Thank you. <laughs> so the blanket ministry, she distributed over 100 blankets Thanksgiving Day. And they were mostly ones that were left over from last year that they were not able to distribute because of quarantine. But I'll tell you what, they um, were, co were collecting more. And we need a lot because they have been really, really appreciated. And I'll tell you, she goes to shelters and with the blankets that aren't acceptable for people, they go to animal shelters. And here's what she will be doing on the second. She'll be going around the city and looking for people who need blankets and will be giving them blankets. So this is huge, guys. We want you really to, to wash those old blankets and, you know, those things that are in the hall that you haven't used forever because, you know, Uncle Joe is going to come stay and you don't even like him. So just wash the blanket and give it to us. Anyway. <laughs> Put them in a hotel, for God's sake. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Let's pray. The joy of being together guides us and protects us. It guards us. It absolutely opens up our hearts in every area as we move out into the world this day, knowing that we have been shifted, we have been transformed, and we have been loved as God, by God, with each other, to each other, through each other, around each other. We are that love of God in action. And how glorious to know that we've been able to take this in and to share it as we move out into our lives. So I know for everyone that there is a sense of blessing. We bless this church. We bless all churches everywhere, every mosque, every ashram, every cathedral, every synagogue, all paths to God, all paths to God, because we are all here to celebrate that one. And I know that right where we are, wherever we are, God is, and all is well. So with a sense of gratitude, I simply say, aha, and so it is, amen. in God.